Okay, so I'm back. So I have already sectioned out the uh, wig, the sections that I'm going to work with. Um, and I do that because it's easier for me. Um, so I put one scoop of the powder in this little container. I'm going to use a couple more scoops, but I figured I, I forgot to turn the camera on. So that's what I have done. So one, two. so good it got like a, a fresh lemony smell it smells really good okay so let me see okay so what we're gonna do is and I'm going to use uh, the 10 volume cream developer mixed with what little bit of 20 we have left. It's only like this much 20 left in here, so I'm going to just mix it up, you know, because I hate, I absolutely hate uh, wasting product. mind that 20 volume is in here and the 20 volume works a little bit differently than the 10 you're going to have some moments where we just going to take really quickly okay not to worry because we're going to be moving pretty fast that's the good thing about using 10 and 20 volume developer you don't have to have possess a whole whole lot of speed you know you just got to know what it is you're doing and what areas you're going to tackle first when you're coloring you know and once you do that you'll be fine okay so i'm going to mix this up While I'm mixing this up, I'm, I'm going to take the time to tell everyone um, to go over to YouTube, to Matriarch of Beauty TV, and you'll be able to see the, this video over there as well. Like and share, comment. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, or anything, I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. Okay, so you want to mix this up until you're your mixture is really, really creamy. And it's gonna start looking like vanilla ice cream, almost. I'm trying to figure out, am I gonna work with uh, foils? Now the secret when you're working with foils is you have to know the volume of developer that you're working with. Because a foil is going to hold in a lot of heat. And the heat is going to make the hair process quicker. So I would advise before anyone uses foil that um, some ideas to 
how long it's going to take you to finish the section that you're working in. And you may have to work in multiple sections. Like here, I'm going to have to work in multiple sections. This is one section, this is another section, and up front. This is one section, and this is the other. So, we got four sections. So I might have to split them up into two. Just do the back section first, and then I'll do the top section. How about we do that? Because I want this color to come out as flawless as possible. I uploaded a picture of a young lady who had the look that I wanted with her natural hair. If you're familiar on uh, YouTube with a young lady called Beat Face Honey, She's a, a, a very, very wonderful creator. She's a, a makeup artist. I love Beat Face Honey's hair. She's a blonde, and she wears really big hair. So that's what I love about this wig. This wig is going to get really, really big, okay? It don't look like it now, but this is big hair, okay? And you can see the gaps that I got in this wig, okay? Um, look at that. That's another gap right there. But I promise you, once this hair, that's what I love about the Indian hair, you don't have to use a whole lot to get a full, thick head of it. Um, this is actually just two bundles of my South South Indian temple hair. And I get my hair from a temple straight out of Handu Pradesh, India. Okay? And I, again, I wish all my friends down there in India well because they're really getting hit hard right now with COVID. So, uh, I'm praying that Raji and all the people that I deal with from the temple. Uh, I hope you guys are well. And I'm keeping a prayer up for you guys. And uh, yeah, let's keep our friends in India in prayer, okay? So back to this. Uh, so I'm going to start with this section first. Now what I'm going to do is in order to achieve the look that I'm going for, I'm going to start lightening first, okay? So I'm gonna start in all these dark areas, and I'm gonna do the back first so we don't get lost, because this is, think of this as like a training. We're in the wig clinic, okay? So. Instead of me trying to tackle the whole wig, something's going to go wrong. Either back hair is going to process before I'm even done applying the bleach up here. Because I want to evenly, strategically place the lightning and the bleach in certain areas. So this is technically a class. <laughs> This is technically a class. Normally I wouldn't show all this stuff because this is something that, you know, easily can be uh, a paid class in wig coloring. But, see, uh, I'm here for you. I'm here for all my people. And we're going to get to this. We're going to have these wigs looking beautiful for the summer. We coming out of quarantine, honey. I'm going to Florida with my family. We planned a dream vacation to Disney World. And we're going to be there 
thinking it's, we're going to be there like eight days. So this is like a dream vacation. Well, this is a dream vacation. And the boys are psyched and I'm excited and my husband is very, very excited because this will be his first time. So the wig that I wear, I want it to really reflect vacation, color, tones, texture, the whole nine yards. And I'm going to get it with this wig. So I'm going to take my time to achieve the colors that I want the different tones of blondes that I want for this wig, okay? So, we are going to start with just lightening up in here. And I'm going to take the lightening down further in certain sections than others. So if you see me applying the bleach over here, and bringing it down to here. No, that's why I'm bringing it down to here because I want all the dark areas to go from this color, this dark color here, to this color, okay? But as you can see on this side, this light color right here goes up much higher than it does over here. But I did that in the beginning too because I wanted dimension, okay? And that was how I did it with that technique. Uh, you could always go back and look at that video when I first colored this wig last summer um, on Matriarch of Beauty as well. So I'm gonna turn her this way, adjust her so you could see. I got my ring light on. Okay. So as you can see right up in here, this is where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna bring the color down, the bleach down to here, over here on this side, and I'm gonna bring it down lower over here because we got more area that's dark, that's lower than here. And I don't want the bleach to overlap because I don't want to over process this. Just, you know, I don't want any bleach to start processing this light color because I'm going to work with this in part two, okay? So, now we have a snapshot of what's going to happen. I got my foils. I do have some foil. Again, if, if you're trying this at home and you're not a professional, again, I am a licensed cosmetologist since 94, 1994. I was a baby when I went to beauty school. I think I was 20 years old, I think. Now I'm telling my age when I went uh, to beauty school. So, um, yeah. So we're going to start with the color and the bleach in here. and smooth. You don't want to have too many lumps and bumps in there, okay? So now I'm just applying my bleach color. Well, my bleach. 
Deus. And I know it's hard, it's, it's really hard when you're using bleach, because it's, you know, the hair start moving around and all those things. Make sure that you try to keep control of the hair as much as possible. so you guys could see what it is I'm doing. Now, when I do this, I'm just working in the bleach just to make sure outside today, do a little shopping, it's a beautiful day out today, I was sitting in here thinking of how I was going to color my hair, because I can't stop thinking about my trip and I just keep coming up with more and more stuff. I hope I'm not overwhelming our travel agent because every time I think of a restaurant I want her to give us reservations at and I immediately call her and I'm like Tammy can you get us reservations and da 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 and, you know and she's just she is just so wonderful she's a cast member from uh the Disney Vacations uh, team, and she is just wonderful. It's like, okay, no, no problem. I'll check and see if there's any reservations available for that restaurant. I mean, she's just so, so, so sweet. So, I hope I'm not overwhelming her, because I added something else another restaurant to our itinerary in hopes that um, we could get reservations for this restaurant because Disney World is just opening back up everything and a lot of the uh, COVID restrictions are still into play. So a lot of restaurants uh, are going by reservation only. So, you can't just walk up and go into an eatery down there just yet because of the COVID restrictions. So, okay, that's fine. We got this. Just make your reservations. Now, with the reservations, you have to make them out. 60 days in advance so we're we're still within i think let me see we're 40 days at now so we still are in that bubble because we uh, started planning our trip like two weeks ago so our travel agent can pull those strings and uh still book us
by our reservations from a few weeks ago when we first decided we were going to um, take the Disney trip. So we started at 60 days in advance is what I'm saying. And that's basically the requirement for reservations and um, a lot of the uh, Disney Resort restaurants. So we're in good shape. We're gonna vlog the whole vacation. And uh, so hopefully you guys will stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, so back to this. So as you can see, I have put the bleach. Now, when you're doing this with the bleach, the hair is going to become really brittle. The hair is going to become really weakened. This is why it's good to have good hair <laughs> to begin with, okay? It's good to have good quality hair, especially if you're going to try to be doing something like this. Because you could easily fry your hair um, with the bleach. And we don't want to do that, okay? So again, what I'm doing is I'm making sure has covered every area where I want lightened because I want my root to be lightened. I don't want a dark root anymore. And when I decide I want a dark root, hey, I can always go back in in the fall with some a root tap. That's what that's called. And darken the root of this wig. Because that's what I want to do. But for now, I want a nice, full vacation, beet face honey. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful blonde with different tones and dimensions. We got four different color toners that we're going to be working with. stuff could start happening. This is why it's good to work with a, a developer that's going to give you time. And the 10 volume and the 20 volume is giving me time. Now, if I was working with a 40 volume, all of this that I've started over here would already be going blonde. And I'm not even halfway done over there. So this is why it's important to choose your volume correctly by your speed and what it is you're doing, okay? And again, you know, this, the color process, the bleaching process is, it will get messy and it, 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 it do become parts in this process where you will get scared really would. You'd be like, oh no, I think I'm going to mess my wig up. Don't get scared. Just stay focused. You're staying focused on what it is you're doing. And don't abandon the plan. Don't abandon what you planned on doing with the color. 
Okay. Trying to get in here where you guys can see. Yeah, so. We're doing Disney and we're doing all the Disney themed studios. We're doing Magic Kingdom. We're doing Epcot Center. We are doing Universal Studios, which isn't a part of Disney, but then again, they are. It's, I didn't quite understand that, but Universal Studios is different than Disney. But the Harry Potter exhibit is in Universal Studios. So that was a whole different ticket we had to purchase um, than our Disney Park Passes. Um, we're doing the Magic Kingdom. Uh, we're doing Animal Kingdom. So each day of our trip, there's, you know, there's a park we could go to, plus we could hop. We got hopper passes. So we could hop from one park to the next if we so choose to, which I think is great because our kids is big enough where they could park hop and it won't stress them out. Um, I took my son years ago, I took Lance when Lance was two years old, I took him to Disney World. And this was before he was diagnosed with autism. But Lance did not, ex he did not enjoy the experience at all. He cried the whole time we were there. And I didn't know what was wrong with him. But looking back now, I feel like, you know, he, he had autism and I didn't know it. He wasn't diagnosed yet, and um, it was just it was just a really rough trip to Disney that year, and it was so much money I spent on that Disney vacation, that dream vacation then, and I spoiled him because he was my first baby, and you know the first thing I wanted to oh I'm gonna take my baby to Disney World and got him down there and he was not happy at all. He was overstimulated and he cried. He was scared of everything. He was scared of the balloons. He was scared of the characters. He was scared of, I mean, it, this little boy just cried the whole, and we were down there eight days back then. So that was a really expensive trip and it was like the best time he had was when he went to sleep in the stroller. Because that was when he wasn't crying. I felt awful. You know what I mean? So, that was years ago. That was in 2007. 2007. I took him to Disney. He was two years old. So, I haven't been back since, and since then I've had another one. Had another little boy, which is Isaac. Isaac will be 10, June the 7th. So initially that's what we were going to do. We planned going to Disney World for, uh, I wanted to surprise Isaac for his birthday. But reservations wouldn't allow us to um, be in Disney World on June the 7th, which is Isaac's birthday. Everything was booked. Every hotel, you know, parks was booked. All the parks was booked because they're running on uh, limited capacity due to COVID restrictions. The parks aren't you know, filling up like how they used to because they got to make sure everybody stays socially distanced. 
So your park tickets, you know, park tickets sold out quickly. So for that time, so I tried to get tickets from mid-June, like around June 15th. They were like, no, everything's booked up until the end of June. So I'm like, okay, let's just not wait anymore. Let's just take the end of June booking. So that's what happened. That's what we have. So we'll be leaving June. Well, we got a check-in at the hotel on June the 29th. Uh, yeah, so we got to be down there in Florida on June the 29th, but we turned this into a road trip, so we're not catching the plane, because my husband don't fly, and, you know, I didn't know how well the boys would want to fly. Me and Lance flew, flew before, but, you know, I'm all up for a road trip. At first, we were going to rent the RV and do a cross, you know, a, a road trip in the RV. But then we kind of, we changed our minds about that as far as we're going to Disney World because a RV wouldn't be good <laughs> as far as, you know, driving that far and we had to worry about parking it in the parking lot when we got to the hotel and you know all those things so we decided to ditch the RV idea and just drive our car so um, so that's what we're going to do so I'm thinking we'll probably leave pull out that Saturday because we have to be in Disney World at our resort on Tuesday. So if we're going to make it a road trip and we want to stop at Salford Border and all that stuff, hopefully everything's open. want to stop at Salford Border and, you know, let the kids, you know, explore and do different things. Um, so that's going to be interesting. Okay, so as you can see, all the dark is gone and our back is com fully complete. So I'm going to stop the video and start a new one.